Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to create four animated scroll buttons for your Divi's site hero section. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So right now I'm in my admin dashboard. Let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here, click on add new. Next, we're going to give a page a name. So we're going to call this animated scroll buttons and then click use Divi Builder. So for this tutorial, we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to select build from scratch and um, we're going to add a single column. Now, before we add any modules, I'm going to come over here to my section settings and add a background color. Now, the color I'm going to use here is a very dark gray. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors I'm using here, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below, which will have all these uh, colors. So right now I'm going to save and then I'm going to come over here and add a text module and select it. Right. So over here, uh, this is just paragraph text. So I'm going to make uh, this text here a heading. So I'm going to come over here after highlighting it, set it to heading one. So now that I've set it to heading one, we need to stylize this. So I'm going to come over here to design. So I'm going to start with my text here. So my font is set at default. So we need to font called Carla. So let's go ahead and select that. Now the next stage is to add a size for our headings. So I'm going to come over here and set this to 5VW. Now as you can see everything is really dark here. So ideally we want to be able to read all this uh, text on this dark background. So let's change this from dark on the text color here to light. So we also want this to be centered. So I'm going to go ahead and center my text and then save. Next, I'm going to add another column in this section. So I'm going to click on this plus button. It's going to be a single column. And this time we're going to add a blurb module. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. So over here on the blog settings, it says your title goes here. We are going to change this and uh, just add the word scroll. Now here we have an image, but of course we want to use an icon. So I'm going to come over here and click on use icon and then choose our icon. So we're going to go with this right arrow. Now let's assign our design settings. So I'm going to come over here to design. So image and icon. So the first thing we're going to do is to set this to white icon placement. We want this to the left. Now we also need to customize the size of this icon. So we need to activate use icon font size and set this to 50 pixels. So for our title font style, we're going to uh, make sure all this is all caps and the text color is going to be white as well. So we can read it easier. The title text size, we're going to set this to 14 pixels. And for the letter spacing, we're going to set this to three. Now, as you can see, everything is really tight here. We also need to add a line height of 50 pixels. So I'm going to come over here and set my line height. Now there's something I forgot here and that is to remove this content. So I'm going to go back to my content tab, click on text and just get rid of this paragraph text. Okay. So this is looking good so far. Now next we need to give our blurb a set width and rotate uh, it vertically as follows. So let's go over here to the width. So I'm going to click here on sizing and under the width, we're going to set this to 132. And for the module alignment, it's going to align this. We're going to align this to the center. Now let's go to transform rotate. So we're going to come over here to transform rotate and set this to 90 degrees. And finally, we need to add some CSS to this module. So I'm going to come over here and on the main element, I'm going to add my CSS code and this CSS code can be found on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So what the CSS does is, uh, it, it will make the arrow display under the vertical text as intended. Now let's add a bit of animation to really make this look realistic. So we're going to come over here to animation and we're going to go with the bounce. The direction needs to be down and the animation duration. We're going to set this to 5,000 and on the delay, uh, let's set it to 400. Now these settings here, you can just play around with them and see which one works best for you. And then over here on the image icon animation, let's set this to left to right. And then pretty much this is our final result. So we're going to go ahead and save. Right. So for the next example, to save us time, we're just going to duplicate uh, the first one here and let's go into our settings. So I'm going to come to my blob module, click on this gear icon. So I want to come over here to the advanced tab 
and then change my horizontal and vertical overflow. So I'm going to click here on visibility. So vertical and horizontal, we need to set this to hidden. Next, we're going to come over here to transform translate. And we're going to go with this option here, break the chain, because the value that we're going to add is only going to be on this axis. So let's add 115 pixels. And then now it's time to add our animation settings. So I'm going to come over here to the animation tab. And let's start off with the animation style. So this time we're going to use slide. And the animation direction is going to be down. The duration is 4000 milliseconds. So the intensity here is currently at 50%. Let's change this to 195 and starting opacity to 100. So for the animation delay here, I'm just going to get rid of this and leave it as a default. Now for the animation uh, speed curve, we want to make sure that we set this to linear and the animation repeat. Let's set this to loop and pretty much that's what we need to do. Let's save this. So in order for you to see what is happening here, you need to refresh the page once you've saved it. Now it's time to design the third option. So for this design, we're going to combine the text module and the blurb module to create a unique arrow tab design. So for this, we're again, we're going to duplicate. So I'm going to come over here, duplicate this whole section just to save us time. But this time, what we're going to do is to delete uh, what we have here. So in fact, to, for me to select this easier, I'm going to go to my wireframe mode and delete the blurb. And in place of that, we need to add a text module, right? So in this text module, I'm just going to add a word which says scroll and then switch over here to the front end editor. So let's add a background color to this module and we're going to set this to white. Next, we're going to come over here to the design tab. And for the alignment, we're going to make sure this is aligned center. Now it's time to set our text color. So I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool. And my text color here is going to be this dark gray. Now let's add our width. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, scroll down here until I get to sizing. And for our width, I'm going to set this to 50 pixels and center it. Now, we need to give this uh, some breathing space because as you can see, everything is really tight here. So let's head over here to spacing and I'm going to start with my padding. So I'm going to give this a padding of 20, both to the top and the bottom. And for the margins here, I'm going to add a margin of zero to the bottom. And now let's add our borders. And uh, for this time, for this design here, we are going to add the borders to the bottom left and bottom right. So by default, when the chain is activated, this will add the borders to all the sides, as you can see here. So I'm going to break the chain first and then add my five pixels here and five, five pixels to the right. So now that this design is complete, it's time now to add our blurb module. So I'm going to save this and then just below this, I'm going to select my blurb module. So what we need to do right away is to delete the title and also delete the text that goes with it, image and icon. And for this, we need to use an icon. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my icon here. Now let's add our icon color by coming over here to the design tab. And for my icon color, I'm going to set it to white. Next, it's time to add a negative margin here. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and add minus 36 to the top. So what this negative margin does is uh, it attaches the arrow with the triangle that we've just created. And we also need to add some CSS code to the blurb because this makes the alignment even easier. So I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab, custom CSS. And in the main element, I'm going to add my CSS code, which can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So pretty much our design is uh, complete here. I'm going to save and then we are going to go into our row settings. So let's set our maximum width by coming over here to design sizing. So for our maximum width here, we're going to set this to 100 pixels. And for the padding, come over here to spacing. We're going to set this to zero. So that's going to be both for the top and the bottom. And for the animation style, we are going to use slide. And this is going to slide down. 
and the animation duration is going to be 1200. So pretty much our design is done here. Next, I'm gonna come over here to our top row and give this a background color. So I'm gonna click here on my row settings, click on background, and I'm gonna give this a background color as well. So the reason why we're doing this is, notice what happens when you scroll. This will be, uh, will have an effect as if it's coming behind this text. So now we need to also make sure that our, our layers, everything is layered correctly. So I'm gonna go back over here, click advanced, and then on visibility, on the Z index, I'm gonna set my Z index here to 10, just to make sure that this is above this scroll animation. Now, what we can also do here is we can further enhance the design by adding some shadows. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll come over here on design and then click on box shadow. So the shadow that we're gonna go with is this one right here. Now notice what happens when I add my shadow. So for my vertical position, set this to 80. Blur strength, I'm gonna set this to 22. And our box shadow spread strength is going to be minus 70. Now for the shadow color, we wanna make sure the shadow color matches our color that we used for that section. So I'm gonna come over here. Now notice that at the moment we have the transparency. So in order to get rid of it, you just wanna scroll all the way up here and then you want to paste your background color. Okay, so now it's time to work on our fourth animation and this is the mouse scrolling animation. So, so we just need to get started with a basic header here. So let's duplicate this one more time. And all we need to delete here is this scroll action on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna come over here and uh, just delete the row, which has the text and the blurb. So now we have a very good starting point. So the next thing we're gonna do is to add a new row. So I'm gonna click on this plus button, single column. And in this column, we are going to add a blurb. So I'm gonna select it. So we're going to use an icon for this. So I'm gonna make sure use icon is set to yes. And then we're gonna choose the icon that we're gonna work with. So I'm just gonna scroll down here. And the one I'm gonna go with is this uh, circle here. Now let's customize the icon. So we're gonna come over here to design, image and icon. We're gonna set the color to white. And we also need to adjust the size. So I'm gonna come over here to use icon font size and set the size to 15. So next, let's come over here to the animation style. So for the animation style, we're gonna set this to slide and direction down and animation duration 1200. And uh, we are going to loop this. Instead of having it animating once, we're going to loop it. And then image or icon animation, let's set this to no animation. Now, the next stage is to add some CSS to our blurb. And this needs to go on the image. And then over here on the contents, we also need to get rid of this title and also this text and then save. Next, we need to add a text module here. So as you can see, I'm unable to add my text module. So I'm gonna use this shortcut and just search for text, and then insert text module. So I'm gonna insert it here. And I'm just gonna add text which says scroll. Now let's stylize it. So I'm gonna come over here, change my color to white. We're also going to center this. And uh, we're also going to adjust our width to 90 pixels. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing. And for my width, 90 pixels. And then let's add our margins. So to add our margin, I'm gonna come over here to spacing. And let's start with the uh, top. So on the top here, we're gonna add 10 pixels. And for the bottom, we're gonna set this to minus 30. Now, in fact, for the module alignment, this needs to be aligned center. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So in fact, back here on the spacing, our minus 30, this needs to be on the left. Okay, so now that we have everything all set, it's now time to adjust our row settings. So, Make sure you're adjusting the right row because this is the second row that we need to make changes to. So in fact, right now it's quite difficult to go into this. So I'm gonna go into my wireframe mode, go into my settings, and then just switch over here to the desktop. All right, so what we're gonna do here is to first 
start by adjusting our width, set this to 30 pixels, and our height is going to be 60 pixels. Now let's head over to the rounded corners. So here we are going to set this to, let's start off with 16 and see how this works. Now for the border styles, as you can see here, we don't see any borders. That's because we haven't set it here. So we're gonna give this, uh, let's say one pixel. But now we want this to uh, look great. So let's give this a color and we're gonna go with white so it's easier to see. Now let's head over here to visibility and set our horizontal overflow to visible and also vertical to visible. So one more thing, as you can see here, my scroll text is not in position. So I'm just gonna go back over here and make sure everything is aligned correctly. So pretty much this is our final result. So I'm gonna save this, publish my page and exit the visual builder. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.